Um, now, Barley Max delivers exceptional beta-glucan levels. Why is this important? We think of beta-glucans as being part of oats, but are they a part of Barley Max too? Yes, the beta-glucans uh, belong to uh, the non-resistant starch component of dietary fibre. Um, beta-glucans have a, a structure which enable them, enables them to dissolve in water, and that dissolution uh, enables the lowering of cholesterol through, you've heard the expression, slowing cholesterol reabsorption. So yes. Barley Max is quite rich, uh, well, very rich, actually, in beta-glucan and also some other associated water-soluble fibres. Okay, so if we combine the Barley Max with oats, we're getting exceptional beta-glucan levels. And uh, probably an effective cholesterol-reducing combination, but we haven't measured that ourselves. Sure, okay. Now let's just return to the colon cancer issue. We mentioned Australia, as we know, has a big problem. You said more than sort of four and a half thousand odd deaths. That's a huge strain on the public purse of Australia. And in the long run, it's staggering. What impact do you think Barley Max is going to have on these figures? Well, if Barley Max and other products that we're developing, if Barley Max and the other grains that we're developing do influence bowel health in the way that we think, Within a measurable time frame, probably five to ten years, if one doesn't really know, we should start to see, if not a decline in the numbers, then an arrest in the rise. So mm -hmm. Barley Max will improve bowel health. We know it does that. We've done experiments to show that. We have also got experimental studies which indicate that it should lower uh, the risk of colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. And if those translate to actual practical outcomes, because this will take time, we should see, as I said, an arrest in the increase and hopefully a decline. Okay, and so how much Barley Max would people need to be having? Would they be having, having Barley Max every day be enough to do that? Well, the experiments we've done um, are relatively short and relatively intense. But basically it looks as if the consumption of Barley Max and other sources of resistant starch and fibre should be at least a daily, it should be a daily occurrence because that seems to be the optimum. So that points to the importance of Barley Max in consumer foods, so that people can actually eat Barley Max and related products on a regular basis. Now, I'm also interested to hear about the latest evidence concerning the glycemic index, or GI. Where, what has the development Barley Max uncovered here in this area? Well, glycemic index is an interesting concept. It was developed to help people, particularly those with diabetes, to not just control the carbohydrate, but the carbohydrate that impacted on their blood glucose level adversely. Barley Max has got a low GI, but we're also particularly interested in its glycemic load. And a serve of Barley Max has a very low glycemic load because now, it's got less starch. Can we explain the difference, therefore, for people between glycemic index and glycemic load? Glycemic index is when you eat a standard amount of available carbohydrate starch or other sugars, or sugars, sorry against a standard which is either white bread or glucose. So you're consuming fixed amounts. And so you're usually setting it against 50 grams of glucose or 50 grams of starch in white bread or whatever. It's a, against a standard. People don't do that. What they do is they eat serves. So if you eat a standard serve, say, whatever your standard is, let's say it's 40 grams, then you're not necessarily eating the 50 grams of starch you're eating less. So Barley Max benefits, one, from having a low glycemic index, which that is, and mm -hmm. when that index, that standard amount is corrected for a serve, the glycemic load, it comes out very low indeed. Now, as part of the reason the glycemic load is low is because Barley Max contains less starch. Yes, it contains 25 to 30% starch. Um, because if it's got more fibre, mm. less starch, they balance each other out. So part of it is the lower starch, but also the starch is less digestible. And that translates to the higher resistant starch. So in essence, what we're saying is that when you consume Barley Max, your blood sugars will rise less and more slowly, comparable to other grains. Yes. Uh, th th there is the idea around that whole grains are automatically low GI. They're Which not, is not true. Not true. No. Because it depends on the degree of processing. The finer the grain is, the slower it passes through the body, the more it's digested. So whole grains are good for you, but it doesn't automatically mean a low GI. Barley Max will assist 
first of all, with having a lower glycemic index, lower glycemic load, but also I should point out that the fermentation that goes on in your colon takes hours. So the glucose is absorbed more slowly, and then the resistant starch is fermented over a long time. So there's benefits here, significant benefits here for people with diabetes. Absolutely. We, we, I must point out again that the work that we've done has been with people with normal blood glucose, not with diabetes. But we yes. would ex anticipate that over the long term, it would assist in improving the control of blood glucose in people with diabetes. Now, some of my own research with glycemic index was also to do with weight control. And so in your view, by consuming foods like Barley Max that will have less of an impact on blood sugar levels and therefore reduce the insulin demand, is there likely to be a knock-on beneficial effect for weight control? Well, we haven't actually done any studies on weight control because they take a long time. To if Consuming ordinary foods like Barley Max or other mm -hmm. foods like, you know, baked beans or whatever, which are sources of resistant starch, you'd have to do it over a long time because the, mm. the decrement, the lowering of energy intake, which does occur because the digestion by bacteria lowers the energy, energy content of a food, would take, would, would take too long for us to do. In the long term, we would hope that would, it would translate to better weight management. The other major killer, of course, in Australia is heart disease. So we know that having high glucose levels, for example, and having high insulin levels are risk factors for, for heart health. Is Barley Max therefore linked to lowering our risk of heart disease? We haven't done those studies because they, again, would take a long time. What we do know is the first and second mean data offer promise that it would lower these indices, which are serious mm -hmm. um, risk factors for heart disease. We do know that consumption of whole grains does lower the risk of heart disease in the long term. So we're seeing some very significant benefits to an awful lot of Australians. I understand that Barley Max is specifically an Australian development. Absolutely. It uh, was done by the CSIRO, um, and importantly, we had the support of a, a company called Australian Capital Ventures. Mm -hmm. um, they are a venture capital company. They put money into it, and we have licensed the grain to an Australian company, mm -hmm. Ausgrains, and they are managing the supply. So will Barley Max be being sold to overseas? For its maximum impact, we hope so, because mm. the problems that we face here are those problems, they're the same problems in the United States, in Europe, and they're emerging in Asia. We would hope that the, the product and the concept would go overseas. We are getting a lot of interest. Is Barley Max good for young and old? Yes. Fantastic. So we should have our kids and our grandparents using yes. this? Uh, oh, especially the, the, uh, the, the older, yes, uh, because uh, problems of constipation and so on really do become serious as you get older. Okay, now can you explain to us how high GI um, products or grains affect the body and why Barley Max is so different? The glycemic index is really a measure of how much the glucose goes up after the consumption of foods. And it's a measure of how much work the body has to do to stabilize those levels. So a high mm -hmm. GI is a, a, a big rise, and a, a high GI is also a big sustained rise. It's a measure mm -hmm. of time and amount. So the more that it goes up and the longer, the more work the body has to do to control it, and that means more insulin. So in diabetes, what you have is the insulin either is not produced enough or it doesn't work. So a high GI, is really not a good idea. Mm. It is under certain circumstances where you want energy after exercise. But for the average day-to-day -day person, no. So Barley Max works because the GI is lowered and the, G the glycemic load is lowered. And in the short, medium and long term, the starch structure, the fermentation and the portion size, the amount mm. that you consume, all contribute to lowering the, the problems, if you like, of glucose regulation. I often explain GI to people as being, you know, our bodies are really not designed to be able to cope with many of the foods in the modern diet, which have a high glycemic index. So would it be true to say Barley Max is kind of more of a return to the way we're meant to eat? It's less stressful on the body to be able to digest, metabolize, and, and use the nutrition from Absolutely. a food like Barley Max. Absolutely. That, that is the, the issue. People want, and uh, you and I want, and, and prefer foods that are convenient, tasty, um, cheap, 
the food industry supplied those. However, and much of food production based on the history of famine and, and food shortages that humanity's faced, the food industry's put, positioned itself to meet that challenge of not enough to eat. The trouble is that um, it's gone the other way. We now are faced with problems of excess. Mm. Australia feeds hundreds of millions of people a year, so we've got more than enough to eat. What we are trying to do is to provide a more traditional food supply, mm. disguised, if you like, as the modern food supply. Yeah, because people still want convenience. There's no two ways about it. Convenience mm. um, is convenience and cheapness are, are um, effectively cost effectiveness. Mm. Um, they, they are the primary desire, the, the desirable factors. However, uh, people, I think, are also prepared to trade off a bit of an increase in price or a little bit of a loss of convenience for greater health. I think the beauty of Barleymax is that it will provide them with that convenience in a, in a very acceptable package, mm. but also one which is, if you like, healthy. And what does it taste like? Well, I like it. Tastes it tastes good? I like it. <laughs> does it taste like normal barley or does it have no, a different it, taste? It, no, it's, it's not to me. Normal barley's got a slightly different taste to me. Um, it's, it's sort of sweeter and nuttier, probably because of the natural sugars in it. A lot of people are using soluble fibre drinks in order to get their fibre that way. And I think people are aware now of the difference between soluble and insoluble. That's quite an easy concept to get. Yeah. How do the fibre levels and, and types in barley mats compare to those soluble drinks? Well, I can't make a direct product comparison um, and would not do so. But um, there are people for whom these soluble fibre drinks are very important. They're the people with gluten intolerance. They can't get the fibre from wheat or barley or whatever because of an allergy. Mm. So they're very useful. Um, but Barley Max does provide a, a combination of soluble and insoluble fiber, which we think, and resistant starch, which we think is optimal. So the soluble fiber drinks will provide fiber, depends on how much you consume, depends on the product. But Barley Max, we know, has a mixture of the fiber types that we think are optimal. You've outlined that Barley Max is a whole grain. How does it rate for other nutrients? Very well. It's uh, got a, an increased fat level, as we mentioned, but still uh, perfectly acceptable. It's got more protein. Mm -hmm. uh, so if people are concerned about protein intakes, it's, I think, about 30% more than standard grains. It's low in sodium intrinsically. Uh, so Which has to be a good thing. We have a big movement to reduce sodium intakes in the exactly, Australian population. Exactly. And especially for the young, because there is a school of thought which has got a, a lot of strength behind it, that in high sodium intakes in childhood actually influence mm. uh, blood pressure control in later life. So mm. intrinsically, Barley Max uh, is low in sodium, and CSIRO, uh, through the Barley Max venture, actually does mandate the levels of other nutrients that are added to it. So if they want to mm. use the Barley Max name, then it's got to meet certain criteria, because the Barley Max itself is low in sodium. Okay, so we can be assured if the Barley Max logo is on a product that, that it's a healthy product, that it through, meets a nutrient criteria. Through the joint venture and lost grains, yes. Fantastic. We have independent nutritionists look at it. And uh, through the, as I say, through the, the joint venture, through the licensees, we have mechanisms in place, including the use of independent nutritionists, not just us, to, mm -hmm. to look at the products. Now, one of the issues that there are with other high-fibre grains, particularly high in insoluble fibres, are the mentions of, or the, the presence rather of chemicals called phytates, which we know can bind minerals like iron and zinc in the gut and prevent their absorption. Is this an issue for Barley Max? Not really. Um, we don't think so. Um, the fermentation of the, uh, the fibre components in the gut by the bacteria liberates these, and we think that, they, that, that there will not be an adverse effect. The evidence on phytate and adverse nutrient balances is not that strong. And so we don't think it's an issue. If we had okay. thought it was an issue, we would have investigated it much more thoroughly. We don't. Now, we haven't talked about any other micronutrients present in Barley Max. Are there levels of minerals like iron, zinc, calcium? There are. They're, they're, they're those that you would expect in a whole grain. Okay. Some of them are actually higher because the fractions that contain them are higher. Um, I can't go into details, but... We've mm. looked at them and, and they're perfectly acceptable. Great. And thank you very much to Dr. David Topping from the CSIRO today. Thank you.